blessed us unexpectedly last year and it was at Carol Wood's anniversary service and the spirit of the Lord hit him in prophetic voice and so I've invited him here to speak to us tonight and I believe he has a word for us so why don't you stand and clap your hands on the Lord as we receive Pastor David in Jesus name. Hallelujah Jesus why don't you clap your hands and lift up the name of Jesus. your worship hallelujah 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 thank you very much I know you're standing we honor Pastor and Sister Crow. As it's been said, the saints of God and all the leaders, pastors and ministers of this congregation and the other pastors, Collins and my friend Brother Gordon, we celebrate your election and promotion. I look forward to serving with you. I felt really good about it. I thought it was an ordination of God. As the lot fell to Matthias, I thought the lot fell to you. And I'm thankful that your voice is going to be in that room. Hallelujah, Jesus. Can I have another amen? I don't have an opening text or any of that. Let me just tell you what I feel. Over the last 18 years, as Pastor has said, been many prophecies and dreams and visions that has been spoken over this congregation declaring what God has in store for this church and this congregation. As a people, God has brought you to this moment, the door of stepping into the fulfillment of those prophecies, dreams, and vision. I want to ask you to pray with me tonight that God would release understanding in this house and that there would be an impartation. Can we pray together right now? Lord Jesus, I celebrate the worship. The praise. I'm thankful, Lord God, for the faith. I would pray, God, strengthen the bodies of thy people. The spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Lord God, speak to us, Lord God. Let your spirit and your word work in concert together tonight and be exalted, confirming my word with signs and wonders following in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Clap your hands one more time to the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. If you'll go with me, God wants to talk to us tonight and help us and speak to us. But you got to go with me. I ain't going without you. I rise tonight to preach to you this word. The revelation that unlocks the supernatural. The revelation that unlocks the supernatural. I take you to a familiar passage tonight in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 on down. It is that story that we have read about over the last month or so building up to Christmas. As we pick it up in Luke 1, 26, the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and delivers God's message. Stay with me. In the sixth month of Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And the virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto Mary and said, Unto her, hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Goes on, verse 30, same chapter. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. The favor of God preceded the conception and the birthing of the child. 
the favor of God that Mary found preceded the conception. You want to see God birth some things in your life? You want to see God release greater things in this ministry? You want to see God fulfill prophecies, visions, and dreams? You have to walk under the favor of God. Mary, Mary says twice in this chapter, she refers to herself as the handmaiden of the Lord. As the handmaiden of the Lord. I think in that we get a picture of what it means for God to favor Mary. Being highly favored of God. She doesn't become boastful and arrogant. She doesn't walk around later identifying herself as a mother of God. She views herself in a mindset of humility. I am the handmaiden of God. And the favor of God came upon her. And the favor, the touch, the tangible touch of God's anointing upon her. The favor of God preceded the conception even. And it certainly preceded the birthing. Verse 31, it tells us, And the angel Gabriel said unto her that you'll conceive my womb, and you'll bring forth a child, and his name should be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The angel Gabriel, the messenger angel of God, just came to her. As Israel has anticipated and waited for the coming Mashiach, the promise, as they have from the earliest of times anticipated the fulfillment of the prophecies. Who is going to be the woman that brings forth the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Savior to the world? And now the angel Gabriel comes and is manifested and is speaking unto her, highly favored. Holy Ghost is going to overshadow thee and you're going to conceive in that which is called That which is born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The angel tells her that you're the one. And she responds to that. And Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. I rise tonight to preach to you the prophetic word. The revelation that unlocks the supernatural. God just sent a word to her. And said that you've been chosen. The favor of God is upon your life. And now there's going to be a conception and a birthing, literally a delivering of greater things. In the natural, you are going to see the manifestation of the favor of God upon your life. And when the angel delivers that word, she responds, uh, measuring everything upon the arm of the flesh. Uh, She responds to the word from heaven uh, with questions, how can this be? I know not a man. For you to walk into what God has for you as a church, as an individual, as a family, you are going to have to stop measuring the word of God the arm of your flesh you are going to have to stop viewing what God could do through the capacity of your bank account through your wisdom through your knowledge uh, through your talents and through your giftings Uh, this is not a backslidden woman this is not a heathen woman this is an honorable woman that knows the favor of God but she still has flesh the angel of God tells her you're going to birth the Messiah His name should be Jesus, save his people from their sins. And she says, oh, this is impossible. God cannot do this because I know not a man. In this hour of the church, God is going to do something that makes no logical sense. How did they get all those animals on the ark in Noah's day? As it was in the days of Noah, it is impossible for For Noah, him, Shem, Jephthah, and the wives, eight souls to get all of those animals onto that ark and take care of them for 380 days or so up until the time it comes to rest on Mount Ararat. It's not possible. It's illogical. But all things are possible to God. You need to stop measuring the word of God based upon your natural cognitive ability to do it. Clap your hands to the Lord, can you? Can you clap your hands to the Lord? I feel like preaching. So, in the midst of Mary's 
the favorable woman, in the midst of her question, how shall this be? The angel, Gabriel, actually gives her some explanation of how it's going to be. Verse 35, Luke chapter 1, thank you very much. You got to catch it. And the angel answered and said, this is how God is going to unlock the supernatural, the next dimension. When God spoke this word to me, I didn't even know the theme of your weekend services. I looked at that flyer this morning when I shared it on Facebook. Huh? But what God spoke to me is this word, that he is ready to release uh, a revelation that will unlock the supernatural. And listen, listen, listen. Luke 1, the angel answered and said unto her, this is the how. Somebody say how. This is the how. This is how it's going to happen, Mary. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Two things, Holy Ghost and thee. And if you miss that, he says it essentially a second time. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Two illustrations in one verse. When she asked the question, how is this going to be? I know not a man. The angel of heaven, Gabriel, the messenger angel says, uh, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. Uh, God does it, but God needs you engaged in the process. Uh, God wants to use our hands. Uh, God wants to use our feet. Uh, pray ye to the Lord of the harvest uh, that he will send forth labors uh, unto his harvest. Uh, God's spirit uh, will come upon you. Uh, the Connection or the alliance huh, between God and man. That's the supernatural. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the higher shall overshadow thee. If you missed that, catch this. Acts chapter 1, 8. Jesus' is closing words as he now sends them on a Sabbath day's journey to Jerusalem. It says, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Power from the Holy Ghost upon you. You will receive it. That is how God is going to do it. The birthing will take place as we avail ourselves. And we come into alignment with God. And God's favor is upon us. Huh? And then God's spirit will come upon us. Huh? Will empower us. Huh? Will overshadow us. Huh? And yes, apostolic church, huh? it will fill us. Huh? And we will go forth huh? in the power of the spirit. Huh? Christ in us. Huh? The hope of glory. Can you receive it? That's why Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ. I. Somebody say I. Some people overemphasize that in the kingdom. And some people don't emphasize it enough. There's a balance there, right? It's never about flesh. God won't give his glory to another. Nothing should be done for self-promotion and self-exaltation. When you start moving into that arena, God's hand comes off of you. But I can do all things through Christ. There's a joining together of God's spirit upon us. And my engagement, my declaration, not my will, but thy will be done. You want God to use you? You can't stay on a couch twiddling your thumb saying, God, use me. You desperately need to walk in the favor of God and to have God's spirit fill you, overshadow you, empower you, touch you in a tangible way, have his anointing come upon you. That's first and foremost. But after that happens, you now have the power, the dudamus doing explosive dynamite power, Acts 1 and 8, to go and do, to do great exploits. Can I have an amen? This is how it happens. God's spirit 
upon thee. God's spirit overshadowing thee. God's spirit in thee. God working in you. God working with you. And God working to you. Is how this is going to happen. How greater supernatural things are going to take place. God chooses to use prophets and prophetess. Yes, he can speak an audible voice from heaven. And he still does. But he chooses to use prophets. Prophetess, apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Offices of ministry. People that will submit themselves to God. Mary, you're right. It will not come through your flesh. We are in an hour like no other hour. Interest rates are insane. Church insurance is, I mean, literally off the charts. It will not happen through the arm of the flesh. But I can do all things through Christ. We can do all things through Christ. I preach to you the revelation that unlocks the supernatural. The story continues with Mary, the angel Gabriel, in this dialogue, this discourse. It's still prior to conception, but she's received a word about conception, what's coming. Luke 1, 36, and the angel says, and behold, thy cousin, she had also conceived. So when Mary asked the question, how shall this be, I know not a man. The angel Gabriel tells her how it's going to happen. The Spirit's going to come upon you over shadow. But then the angel gives her an example of what God can do. And he holds up an example of somebody that she knows. That she knows. I'm so thankful in my weakness God just labors with me. I'm so thankful in my frailty God just labors with me. I'm so thankful in my questions. God is just patient and long-suffering with me. Don't give up on yourself. God's not going to give up on you. God's going to stay right there. He's going to labor with you. He's going to suffer long with you. And the angel gave an example. And the angel gave an example. Okay, so I can see. I'm just thinking out loud. Mary, that you're struggling to understand and receive this, okay? Let me bring it home to you now. Like that cousin Elizabeth, you know that, that old cousin. That cousin, the Bible says in Luke 136, who was called, somebody say called. See if I can do this, Pastor Collins, without killing myself. That cousin who was called barren. She wasn't just barren. That was not just the reality of her medical condition her womb was closed, unable to have a child. But she was known, best I can tell, she was known in the community for being barren. Man, I drive by that church, there ain't but four cars in the parking lot. I go in, there's more empty chairs than there is live body. I'm not preaching about yours, I'm preaching about the one that I passed. Uh, oh my God, those people don't have anything going on. Uh, this woman was called barren. She was like, Identify. Let me pause and say something. You need to stop allowing Satan to identify you because of a condition in your life huh, that you could not help. You need to stop, boy, I'm in the Holy Ghost now. You need to stop allowing Satan to identify you because of a physical, neurological condition in your life huh, that you did nothing to cause. And she was called barren. Elizabeth, your cousin. She's old and she's called barren. You, you know Mary, right? You remember. Yeah, I know, I know. Elizabeth now is in the sixth month of her pregnancy. She has conceived a child, John the Baptist. And she is in the sixth month of her pregnancy. Sometimes you just got to get around some people that have already seen the manifestation of what you want to come to realize. 
Sometimes you just got to get around it to catch it. Some things are not taught. Uh, they're literally caught. Uh, they're transferred into your spirit. Uh, if you're struggling getting past something, uh, go get with somebody that has an anointing upon them uh, because they have conquered that thing. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. I remember many years ago, I was 19 years old, had the Holy Ghost about six months. My pastor said to me, I couldn't spell Bible, like literally, I couldn't spell Bible. My pastor said, Brother Dagan, Brother Daniel, I want to take you with me. There's a gift of the Spirit seminar taking place. A man by the name of Freddie Clark, he's no longer in our fellowship, but he was teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, mightily used. He said, I, I just feel like you need to be around that to catch something. And, and I, I didn't even study at that point the passage in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10. 1 Corinthians 14 on the gifts of the Spirit. But my pastor sensed it. And he says, you need to get around some people that's already experienced that. The angel Gabriel says, your old cousin Elizabeth that was barren now has a child. And she is six months into this. Verse 37. This is the last statement of the angel Gabriel unto Mary. Before the angels part of the conversation's over. For with God, nothing, somebody say nothing. nothing. Nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, if Mary accepts that or not, it's a truth. If, if Mary walks in the revelation of that or not, it is still a truth that is absolutely settled from heaven. The angel has delivered the prophecy. The angel has been patient and loving and kind towards Mary, giving examples, giving explanation. My God, I pray over a situation. I don't get anything. But the angel gives an answer to Mary, a prophecy to Mary, how it's going to happen, uh, an example of a cousin. And now the angel says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. That truth is settled, it's done. The question now is, is Mary going to ever realize? Is she going to unlock the supernatural and the miraculous in her life? That's why in one church service, that person gets blessed, wiped out in the Holy Ghost, and they leave with their life changed. And that person leaves unmoved and unaffected. Because the reality of the truth is that God can touch both of them. That nothing is impossible to God. But one hears the word and mixes it with faith. Responds with a hunger. And is not a hearer only but a doer. They respond and the other one does not. So Mary, the ball's in your court now. The ball's in your court and I bring you to the verse of the theme and the title of this message, the revelation that unlocks the supernatural. As the angel now ascends away, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Verse 38. Verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden, there's a humility. Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Leave the verse up. That's the revelation that unlocks the supernatural. Not just in Mary's life, but in my life and in your life. The question now, with your eternity, with the visions and the dreams and the prophecies laying in the balance, like a teeter-tot on the playground, with them laying in the balance. The question is not, can God do it? Of course he can do it. He's omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, fills all time and space. Of course he can do it. The question is, are you going to move beyond your questions and your weakness and your frailties and your inabilities and come to the declaration and revelation that unlocks the supernatural? in your life, in your family, 
and in your church. Be it according to thy word. Be it according to thy word. The vision shall come to pass and it will not lie. It may tarry, but it will come to pass and it will not lie. The promises of God are yea and amen. God is not a man that he would lie. There's no slackness in God. There's no shadow of turning with God. God's word is forever settled in heaven. Can you receive it? Why don't you worship? Can you worship? Somewhere in the midst of that angel departing, he heard her say, be it according to thy word. And the angel's gone. He departed. Be it according to thy Are you okay? You got just another minute. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 14 down to verse 17. It is a story similar, but God unlocks a great spiritual revelation. And we find ourselves here, Second Kings 6, 14 to 17, days of Israel, the prophet Elisha. His longtime good servant, Gehazi, now is gone, has forsaken him because of money, previous chapter. We come now to 2 Kings 6, 14 to 17. It opens up with a great number of the sons of the prophets. A larger facility is needed because there's so many young prophets. It's amazing when you lose somebody that was so promising, like Gehazi. God has a way of just sending so many more. And they had so many young prophets huh, that they needed a bigger venue, a bigger facility. And so it, I hasten to the point. King Syria now was planning, the king of Syria was planning a great attack against Israel. And one of the young prophets working under Elijah's mentorship gets wind and gets knowledge of what's coming. How the king of Syria is going to bring his chariots and horses, and is encamping the city. 2 Kings 6, verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God, a young prophet, was risen early, he went forth, and behold, a host can pass the city, both with the horses and chariots, the army of Syria, that can pass the city. The servant said unto Elisha, last master, how? That we do, there it is again. How shall we do? You have to get over this word how. If you're ever going to see into the spirit, if you're ever going to see the supernatural, if you're ever going to see him bring him, God bring him into the kingdom from hell holes huh, and from whorehouses huh, and from meth and from fentanyl huh, and from all of that, huh, you got to stop looking through the eyes of natural thinking, huh, carnality and your own ability. Huh, you got to move beyond the how huh, and say, God, open my eyes up. Huh, God, let me see through the eyes of faith. And the young servant says unto Elijah, the elder prophet of God, Elijah, master, how shall this be? How will we overcome this? Elijah says in verse 16, 2 Kings 6, we are not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes he may see. In just a moment, we're going to pray. And that is a prayer I want us to pray. We've got to open our eyes to see. Jesus, some of the darkest places in my life, convoluted thoughts and discouragement, Crippling, paralyzing discouragement. Doubt, fear, anxiety in my life. 
By the grace of God, I don't boast of myself. But by the grace of God, with all of that going on, I was able to push out a prayer. And I do mean push out. I was able to push out a prayer. God opened my eyes. Woo! Open my eyes up to the Spirit, God. Open my eyes up, God, to what you've already set in motion. I feel like that's something that God wants to do in this house, huh? in this church, and with this leadership. Huh? God, let me stop measuring and counting empty chairs. Huh? That's a lie from Satan. Huh? That's the flesh. Huh? How are we doing? Huh? You need to pray, God, open my eyes up huh? and let me see what you're doing in the spirit. Can you worship for a moment? Why don't you worship? Hallelujah. And the elder, and the elder prayed, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots. Imagine Elisha was thinking about when his predecessor when his man of God was taken away in a whirlwind of fire, chariots of fire, carried away. It represents the angels. It represents the Spirit of God. It represents the host of heaven. And God opened up the eyes of the servant to see there's more with us than is against us. The angels of heaven are standing with us. I believe in this hour... As you read through the book of Acts, it is absolutely undeniable. Not only is there visions and dreams in the last day church, there's clear, notable manifestation of angels in the last day church. It is not biblical to pray to them or to worship them. We pray to God, but in God's wisdom, he chooses to use them at his charge. And I believe God is going to give us a greater awareness of angels. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about those that fear him. God, let me be sensitive to the accompaniment and the presence of angels. The possibility became the birthplace of revelation for the supernatural. To this young prophet that was overwhelmed by fear because the king of Syria, all of his chariots and all of his horses had come past the city. That impossible situation became the platform by which God released a revelation of the supernatural. God, many times in our weakness, would teach us some of our greatest lessons. God, many times in our frailty, because we, we get to the point where we can't fix it. We get to the point where we can't even hardly carry it any longer. We get to the point that we can't even rationalize how we're going to make the bills come together. As uncomfortable as that place is to be. I certainly do not want to go there of my own choosing. But that is a prime place to be for God to show you something that many times when things are good, we hurry right past that revelation because we can and thus we do. But when we cannot, the place of weakness, it's your blood for 12 long years, my money's gone now. I wonder why she had to wait until she was broke. As long as I got some money, I can find me a doctor. The doctor can fix my issue of blood. My money is gone now. Doctors cannot help me. Okay? I know it's been a bad journey for you, woman. But you are primed and positioned for God to open up the supernatural to you. You are not ready. 
You need to hear me right now. You were not ready to receive it earlier. You have wondered why your darkness has gotten greater. You have wondered why the hole has gotten deeper. You have wondered because you have prayed and prayed and God has not moved. Yes, you have prayed. And you prayed sincere prayers. But you have not relinquished the control of it to God. You have not laid it on an altar and submitted your spirit to God. It says of Christ, Paul writes of Christ, that he learned obedience. Dig it out. Keep the preach honest. Paul writes in Hebrews about Christ learning obedience in the days of his flesh, of course, his humanity. If he had to learn obedience, not my will, thy will be done, God in the Gethsemane prayer, if he has to learn obedience, what about us? I know old damnable Daniel with my carnal flesh has to learn obedience. You know how we learn that? If we choose not to surrender all, God loves us so much, he puts us in a place of breaking. Fall upon the rock, that's your choice. You do that, it'll be a much easier process. It certainly seems to me to be more honorable. But if you choose not to, it's coming. The rock is going to fall upon you. Because it's not about your comfort in this life. It is about us being right with God and hearing the words, well done. That good and faithful servant. Elijah spoke a prayer, and God, in an incredible moment of difficulty, opened the eyes up of a young prophet. I closed. I wonder if the, just, just a keyboard player could play very softly, please. I close. Pastor put on the flyer, or had somebody put on the flyer, releasing the prophetic. I had the message several days ago that God gave me to preach here tonight. I did not have a closing. I did not feel settled on how to close it until late this afternoon. I close now, Joshua chapter 3. The young man, somebody said it. The outreach minister said it tonight. It was a confirmation to me. He talked about going into the land to possess. We come to Joshua 3 now. It has been a time of ancestral generational bondage and hardship. Now they have come out of 400 plus years of Egyptian bondage, come across the Red Sea, 40 years of wandering now. That generation has died off, save Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua brings them to the brink of the overflowing Jordan in the time of harvest. In the time of harvest, Joshua 3. These people that have come to this place, the Jordan, the brinks of the Jordan River, they stand upon the shoulders of great people that have made sacrifices to get them here. But this people, led by Joshua, will realize the fulfillment of the visions, of the dreams, of the prophecies. They will realize the prophetic possession. Joshua 3, 4, the closing statement of that verse. For ye have not passed this way, you too far. You got to change a bit the way you're thinking. Pray for a larger vision. Increase your study habits because God's going to give you a platform well beyond this church. Your spirit is right. What you've done with Brother and Sister Hughes was honorable. That goes well beyond a well-crafted message and sermon. That speaks of the spirit of a man. The spirit of the man goes before him. The spirit of the man is a candle of the Lord. Huh? And your spirit is going to shine. Huh? You need to start walking right now like you're an elder man of God. Huh? You need to start conducting yourself right now huh? like you're a man with even greater spiritual authority. God has brought you to a place huh, with your wife huh, that you have not here to for past. Huh? Can you pray right now? That's it. Can you pray for a moment? That's it. Can you pray for a moment? 
Can you pray for a moment? That's it. Can you pray? That's it. Some of you ladies gather with Sister Crow. You ever stretch your hands up here. Yes. Yololo Sanda Maki. Can you come over here with the new man? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Crow, come over here and join us. That's it. Stay prayerful. Stay prayerful. Stay prayerful. Brother and Sister Crow, come right over here. Pastor Collins, Sister Collins, can you join us? Face the congregation. If you are part of this church, you, are, you need to hear what I'm about to say to you. Seven times over in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 to the seven churches of Asia, God spoke to the angel of the church and expected that he would speak and affirm and admonish the good in the church and correct the bad. It is true. God can speak to you. That is true. Aaron and Miriam, but you need to be careful how you handle this. God spoke to Moses face to face. Your health and your walk with God is directly tied to God speaking to your pastor. Can you pray for your pastor and his wife like your life depends upon it? Like your life, like your life depends upon it. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Can you pray? That's it. Can you pray? God, touch him. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Sister Crow, I want to share a word if I may. Sister Crow, the reason why you deal with insecurity so much, the reason why it plagues you is because you are measuring your ability to be qualified for the position that you feel based upon your natural measurements and matrix, huh? your bloodline, your lineage, huh? your background, your training, all of that. Huh? You need to look through the eyes of faith. Huh? Yes, read books. Huh? Yes, listen to elder women of God. Huh? But what qualifies you huh? is the anointing of the ancient of days. Huh? What gives you wisdom huh? is the wisdom of God. Huh? What helps you to speak understanding huh? is the touch of God's Spirit! Yeah. 
in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we worship? Can we worship? Hallelujah. I feel another word for this for this sister right here. The last 10 minutes of the message, I felt a very drawing and the resting of the Holy Ghost towards you. You are sitting in darkness. But there's a revelation and an understanding that you have not yet embraced that God is trying to teach you. He's trying to cultivate a greater dimension of trust. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. You will graduate from the present child. You will move on and not go back. When you finally receive the revelation of deeper trust that God has been trying to communicate to you. Can you pray? Can you pray? Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. I feel another word. My brother right here. Can I pray over you? Is that okay? Hallelujah. I, I don't know anything about you. Forgive me. I've met you before. Your spirit, like Nathaniel, there's no guile in you. There's no guile in you. But there's another dimension that God is trying to pour you into. And you've been hesitant. God is trying to pour you into some deeper He's trying to move you from some, from some knee-deep water to water up around here. And there's been a little hesitation. Not rebellion. There's just been a little hesitation. I'm telling you that if you can press into, if you can say, God, I'm willing to go to that deeper places, the questions that have haunted your mind uh, and try to make you question uh, and pause and hesitate. Uh, God will manifest answers uh, and God will make it clear your strength is little. But God has set an open door before you uh, and it is time that you walk through it. You have not denied his name. You have not denied his word. Uh, God will give you the strength. Uh, go forward. to share a word with this couple. This is your church here. You're the outreach minister here. You were the one that spoke to me from the parking lot. That was very nice of you. Just naturally exude a spirit of a servant. The killer to being an anointed called servant is impatience. It's impatience. You can feel the anointing to do. That does not mean that you have the wisdom at this moment to fulfill that. Jeremiah writes in Jeremiah 3, like verse 13, 14, about trying to get water out of broken cisterns. Giftings, knowledge, and even a willingness to do does not altogether qualify you to step forward in the ministry. You have to trust God's timing and the man of God that's over you. 
If you rush that, I love you. I feel a profound touch of God upon you. But Satan's trying to get you out of line a little bit. And if you rush that, then you're going to get to a place where you're no longer under his cover day to day and under his watchfulness day to day. And if you get to that place and you're still broken and ill-prepared, it's going to be a train wreck. And it's going to cost you a lot more than a ministry. I believe in you. Trust God's timing. Possess your soul and your patience. And when you get there, you'll be ready, equipped, and prepared for what God has for you. Can we pray? Yes, yes, can we pray? Can we pray? Can we pray another minute? Can we pray? Can we just feel after God for just another minute? I'm not trying to extend it, but can we feel after God for another moment? Let's worship. Can we pray? Can we pray? Hallelujah. 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 I want to share a word here with my brother. I want to share a word here with my brother. You keep praying. I don't want to do anything to make you feel uncomfortable, sir. You're a sincere man. I feel an openness in your heart towards the things of God. The prodigal son, Luke 15. He found himself in a dark place. He came to himself. Not because of his older brother. Not because of what his daddy done. Thank God for the supporting staff in the church. Thank God for family members that love us. Huh? But he came to himself. And he went back to the father's house. Huh? And from all indications, he was with the father the rest of his life. Your miracle is tied to you coming to yourself. When you settle it, when you have a prayer meeting, everything will change. Thank God for my prayers and their prayers. Huh? But when you have a prayer meeting and settle it, God has something for me. God wants to bless me. Then it will be settled from now until your dying breath. That's it, pray out. Come on, the prophetic has been released in this place. Uh, why don't we just lift our hands and begin to worship uh, as the praise scene begins to sing right now. These altars are open. Uh, 
We just need the Lord to open the word. We're going to pray that prayer here in just a second, that the Lord would open up our eyes here tonight, that we'll stop looking through the lens of our flesh, that we'll stop looking through the lens of our abilities, that we'll stop looking through the lens of our natural abilities, but we'll trust and believe in God and the Spirit of God. Come on, if you're in this place, why don't you stand with me as I go before the Lord in prayer here tonight, and we open up this altar here tonight. Even if you're beside somebody, if you feel appropriate, connect with them and pray tonight. We want God to open up our eyes. Open up our eyes and we can see that there is more for us than be against us. Come on, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight, Lord God, for your prophetic word. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for the release of your prophecy. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for your man servant, Lord God. We pray the prayer of faith right now, oh God that you, Lord God, will open up our eyes, Lord God, that we may see that there is more for us, oh God, than be against us, Lord God. Open up the eyes of every soul in this place. Release the prophetic in Jesus' name. Release the prophecy, oh God. Release every dream. Let it come to pass. You said your promises are day. And amen, Lord God. We put our flesh down today, oh God. We're not walking by the flesh, Lord we walk in faith today, Lord God. Open up our eyes, Lord God. Release your angels into this place. Release every healing angel, Lord God. Release every warring angel, Lord God. Release every delivering angel, Lord God. Release it over every soul. Release it over every backslider. Release it over every church. Release it over every family. Release it right here in this altar. Let us leave with faith. Faith. To believe that you are, and you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. Father, we seek your face tonight. Father, we seek your face tonight. Lead us by the Holy Ghost. Lead us and guide us by your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on and cry out to the Come on and lift up your voice in this place. flowing in this house please hear me keep praying but hear me when God brings you to something 
in prayer, in intimate moments with God that you refuse to deal with, that you will not give God access to, then all forward progress stops at that point until you deal with it. Some of you have bitterness and brokenness that you're not dealing with. But healing balm of Gilead is flowing in this house. You can leave here and all of those broken places can be healed. But God's not going to force it. you got to say, God, I give you access to it. Can we pray?